Good morning. Good morning. And the Lord be with you. Also with you. A very warm welcome to everyone as we gather in the Lord's house for this Reformation Day. Um, I can already smell the charcoal when I'm out in the narthex, so I hope you all came hungry today. We're having the bratwurst luncheon right after church. Um, even if you didn't sign up but can stay, please plan to do that. Uh, there should be plenty of, of bratwurst and potato salad and all sorts of good things. I didn't see the bratwurst and I didn't see the potato salad much yet, but I can tell you there's a lot of dessert. So please plan to, to stay for that, if nothing else. Uh, let's see, a few announcements as we begin. Uh, first off is the door offering for Hurricane Helene response in Western North Carolina. Today is the final day for that, so if you would like to make a donation, uh, please place it in the box. We'll be sending a check to LCMS Disaster Relief later this week for everything that's been received. If you'd like to contribute to the, the kits that we're collecting, the tables are in the narthex. You'll see that if you haven't already uh, when we go into the luncheon. So far, St. Paul has contributed. We've got a load from Trinity that's come in. We have a load from Good Shepherd Midlothian that's come in. Um, but you said that some more things that we're still looking for, I believe. Yeah, there's, um, there's empty buckets in there, five gallon pails of leaves and blue. Please take a bucket and go out this week and fill it with the items that are on the list and bring it in next week. Um, Monday morning, Jeff and I are headed out to North Carolina. I would love to um, fill the trailer that Mrs. Gorman has kindly allowed us to use. To go to North Carolina truck and trailer, so I want to fill that thing. So grab a bucket, run to the dollar store, whatever, and, and fill it and bring it back on Sunday so that Sunday we'll be loading the trailer and Monday morning we'll be headed out. So, so if you couldn't hear what Victor is saying, is, is take a bucket if you would like to. There's empty ones in the narthex. Fill it up with the things that are on the list on the insert in your uh, bulletin today and then bring it back next Sunday because we're going to load the truck, the trailer, right after church next Sunday. So if anyone is here and can stay and help us do that, we would appreciate that. Um, but the plan is to load the trailer after church, and then Monday morning, uh, Jeff Johnston and Victor Purchase are going to drive to Western North Carolina. Originally, we said Asheville, but they've changed the receiving location to a church in Conover, North Carolina, not quite as far west. Um, but Thank you for doing that for us. We appreciate that. Um, and we appreciate anyone who can stay and help next week as well. Is there anything else we need to announce this morning? Yes. This Saturday at 1 o'clock, we are filling the shoe boxes. Okay. In the, in the uh, fellowship hall. So if you adopted a box or donated items, you'd like to come and help us fill boxes. One o'clock Saturday, Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes are going to be filled. Because we're blessing those. Is it next week we're blessing those? Yes. So, so ne next week we're going to have them all in here. They're going to be blessed and then they begin their journey to wherever it is that they're headed to this year. Anything else we need to share? Yes, Paul. The men's association, a club, or what do you want to call it, that we do, we still have 16. The last count was 16. 16 pounds of barbecue for sale. If you'd like to purchase some, it'd be great. We were talking at a meeting the other day. The pastor said it's frozen, it'll make a good stocking stuff. <laughs> That, that was mentioned, as a matter of fact. <laughs> it's only $15 a pound. Uh, so please, help yourselves. Just let one of the guys know. They can get it for you from the freezer uh, and take it and give it a good home, please. Anything else? If not, as we move into worship, today is Reformation Day. Uh, oftentimes we think of it as the time that we celebrate Martin Luther and the Reformers, and certainly we do give thanks to God for the that they did, but the main thing about Reformation Day is the restoration of the gospel to the churches. The salvation by grace through 
faith that Jesus Christ came and won for us return to the churches and we proudly preach and proclaim that and gladly receive it. With that in mind, let's stand and sing our opening hymn. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, 
call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved for temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgive you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May he who began this good work within you bring it to completion on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God is our refuge and strength. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth gives way. Though its waters roar and foam. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. The Lord of hosts is with us. Come. Behold the works of the Lord. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He burns the chariots with fire. I will be exalted among the nations. The Lord of hosts is with us. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord.
Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies. And grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then, what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By law of works? No. But by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith, apart from work of the law. This is the word of the Lord.
Please rise. Alleluia. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham, and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. And we join together in confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. I do invite the children to come forward for our children's message at this point. Oh, wow. That looks scary. What is that? A skeleton. Oh, no. Is that a, a child skeleton came up with the children's message? Yeah? Nice. How's everyone today? Good. It's good to see so many of you. Who here has a pet? Everyone has a pet. What kind of pets do you have? Cat? Dog and a cat. A dog? A cat dog. A cat dog. A dog. A dog. Dog and a cat, chickens and a turkey. Okay. <laughs> and they're pets, not dinner, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Friends, not food. I do remember that from the movies, yes. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about that today because we've been babysitting our daughter's dog quite a bit the last couple of weeks. You like baby dogs? Well, he's almost two, somewhere around two. So, yeah, he's cute, but you take him for a walk and he comes in, and what does he think he deserves? Treats! And he, and he comes in and he goes over by the table where he knows the treats are, and he sits down and just stares at you. Your mom is babysitting a dog? Well, what did the dog do that he deserves a treat? He goes on a walk, but does that mean you deserve a treat? It does. Well, he always behaves because he's our little dog. <laughs> then that's not really behaving, is it? If they're barking at other dogs. But, but he's been very good about that lately. He looks at them and growls sometimes at squirrels, but he doesn't chase them, no. 
Yeah, some do that. Train them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we should use tr treats to train them, but they get this crazy idea that they deserve. Well, we're, we're, let's just talk about you guys for a minute. What do you guys deserve? Who had breakfast today? It's like, now tell me, what did you do that deserved breakfast? Nothing. Okay, that, that's a very honest answer. I'm proud of you for that. It's part of a routine, and and I'm, I'm just going to guess, maybe in, at least in most cases, your parents made your breakfast for you. It's, it's required that you come dressed for breakfast. I, I understand that, but do you really deserve breakfast? Yeah, because you'd be very hungry if you didn't get it. You would starve. You'll, you'll blow up if you don't eat food. Okay. Blow up. Hi, good morning. Hi. So, what about your birthday? Did anyone get gifts at their birthday? Oh, yeah, yeah. What did you do that deserved gifts? Nothing. Ice cream. You had the birthday. You were born. But what did you really contribute? Nothing. Nothing. You just showed up. You just showed up and you got gifts every year since then, right? So they can what? Yeah. You turn older on your birthday and we celebrate that. But that's the kind of thing we're thinking about today is, you know what, there's a lot of things in life we get, there's things our pets get that we don't really earn or deserve. But yet we get them anyway because we have we love our pets, our parents love us, and the big thing for today is we hear about, fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And that's what God is saying to us. We haven't earned or deserved anything good from God. We're all sinners and do things that are wrong, but yet God loves us, and he sent his Son into the world to suffer and die for us anyway to pay the price for our sins, that we would be his now and forever. And that's the big message for, for Reformation Day, is to remember we don't earn or deserve anything good from God, but he gives it to us out of his kindness and grace. Did you just give me this to keep? Oh, thank you. You can have it. What I want you to all have today, too, is what we call Luther's Rose. It's a sticker. Do you want to take one? Right there? Okay. There we go. You want it right there? Okay. Luther's Rose is a reminder. What was at the center of Luther's Rose? Who sees what's at the center? Um, I would see the crown and the heart. Okay. A cross and a heart. And that's talking about God's love for us and how Jesus gave his life for our sins. So that's a reminder for you as you as you go home today. Jesus loves you, and he, lo and he has taken away your sins so that you'll be his now and forever. Let's close with a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for the wonderful gifts that you give. We don't earn or deserve anything good from you, but yet you give it freely. Help us to, to love you back and to know the salvation you have for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thank you all for coming up. You can go back to your seats.
look at the third article of the Apostles' Creed and its meaning. What is the third article of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord, or come to Him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the Gospel, enlightened me with His gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, He calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian Church on earth, and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian Church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for today's message is from the epistle reading that you heard a few moments ago, the one that comes up every year for Reformation Day. And I share with you these words. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it was 1517 when the Reformation began. Luther had been studying the scriptures. He was beginning to better understand what the scriptures actually taught rather than what he was hearing uh, through the Catholic Church of his day. And he was coming to the better understanding of what you find here in Romans chapter 3 or Ephesians chapter 2 or even Galatians as you read through there, that there, there are no works that we do that earn salvation for us. And what he was seeing from the church in that day was the indulgences. They were going to fix everything in Rome, and they needed money in order to do that. And what better way to do that than through the sale of indulgences? If you just paid a certain amount of money, it would pay for your sins. And you would have this certificate that said, you stood forgiven. And almost, you could say, I can go and do whatever I want now. Because I have this piece of paper that says my sins are taken care of. And the folks that were selling these things, well... You wouldn't see this in the world today, I'm sure, but they had a plan that fit every income. It didn't matter how much money you made or, or how little money you made. There was something that would fit your needs, and they could take care of it. And Luther was preaching against this, strongly preaching against this. And yet people would come back to him with the certificates because it just sounded like something they needed to have. Something that they could hang on to and be sure that, that everything was going to be okay. So, on All Hallows Eve, October 31st, 1517, knowing that the whole town was going to gather for All Saints Day worship the next morning, Luther posted his 95 theses on the Wittenberg Chapel door. And then... As the people came to, to worship that day, they could read them, and he was asking for a debate. Because he knew if he could debate the theologians, they could get to the bottom of what God's word actually said. And certainly the Pope is not aware of, of any of this. Well, let's just say that that day the, the Reformation was begun. It certainly was a movement that started before that and continued long after that. But the desire that Luther had that we look at so closely on Reformation Day is the need for the gospel message to be returned 
to the church. That people would hear that there is salvation in Jesus Christ, and it only comes through faith in him by the grace of God. And we discover it in his word. And what Luther adds to all of that is the word alone. You can't spend some money and earn part of your salvation somehow. You can't go out and do some good works that are somehow going to contribute to your salvation. It's by the grace of God alone that you are saved. And when you read through Romans chapter 3, the section that we have in our readings today, and as well as before that, what it does first is make clear we all stand condemned before God. Everyone is a sinner. Some might look better to us publicly than others do, but what God clearly sees is what's in our hearts. And he knows the lack of love that we have at times. The sins that we commit on a daily basis. He knows the people that we are at heart. And that's what the law shows us. We're not going to keep the law and somehow be saved. We're not going to keep part of the law and say, well, well God, that's, that's pretty good. I, I did good today, Lord. You, you, you know I deserve something. That's kind of like Charlie sitting there staring at me, waiting for his treat. Well, you know, Charlie, you didn't exactly do everything good this morning, but yeah, you did go for a good walk. No, it, it, it doesn't work that way. That isn't how we are saved before God. Adam and Eve came into the world, they ate of the fruit, and from that point on, everyone is a sinner. When you get to Genesis chapter 5, it talks about Adam and Eve having more children. And it says that they were conceived in the image of Adam. Not the image of God at that point, the image of Adam. And the image of Adam is a sinner. And that's what we all are. In our baptism, that image of God that was the uh, humanity was created in is beginning to be restored and we will have it fully on that last day when we are with our Lord in heaven. But right now, here in this world, each and every one of us are sinners. We are separated from God. We stand condemned and deserve nothing good. But yet what our text tells us is that nonetheless, God still loves us. Undeserved. Nothing that we have done deserving the kindness of God. If I were God, I would simply have wiped out humanity and thank, thanks be to God, I'm not him. He is the one who loves us and wants us to be his own so badly that he willingly sent his own son into the world to suffer and die for our sins. That each of us would, would, stand, would stand righteous before him. He gives it to us as a gift. That's the God that we have. Ask yourself the same question we were talking about with the kids. What did you do that you deserved breakfast this morning? What did you do that you deserve cars and trucks and all the things that you have in your life? It's good once in a while to think about the gifts that God has given you if you do an inventory of your home, if you have enough paper to do that. Uh, what did you do that you deserved all of that? God is good. God is gracious. And God willingly gives us and abundance. But the most important thing is not to get hung up on the things of this world, but to realize the real gift that he has given to us. I believe I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. I can't do that. 
If you believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that is the work of God himself, the work of the Holy Spirit, through his word coming to you, touching your heart, changing you to believe. And that's God's desire for everyone, that we would hear the word, that we would believe on his name, that we would be his now in faith, but yet looking forward to the day when we are going to be with him in eternity. And with our own eyes, we're going to see him. And we're going to be with him. Because he's going to bring us home to be with him in eternity. Undeserved. And yet given as a gift. Nothing we have contributed. Nothing that we have earned in any way. A gift from our God. To each of us. That's what we celebrate on Reformation Day is the gospel. The gospel that says that we are saved by grace alone. Nothing else added to it. It is God's grace that he reaches out to us and offers us this great salvation. It's received through faith alone. It's that faith that he gives to us that grabs hold of the gospel message. And the understanding I've always had is that, that it's as though God comes down and he grabs your hand and pulls it out to grab hold of that grace that he has for you. You can't even do that because scripture speaks of us as being dead in our sins and trespasses. We can't come to God in any way, but he comes to us and brings us back to life. Grace alone, faith alone. Scripture alone. The word of God alone. There is no other means that he, he works through other than his, his word and his sacraments. His sacraments are his word attached to some physical means. But it's that work where the Holy Spirit is active and working in our lives. The word of the law that condemns us shows us that we are sinners who deserve nothing good from God, but then even more so the gospel that announces the grace of God unto each of us and says, I love you, I forgive you, I gave my life for you. When Jesus came into this world and suffered and died, and he rose again for each of us, that we would be his now and forever. That's the gospel message that, that the Reformation Day is all about. Jesus Christ and him alone. In Jesus' name, amen. We rise for prayer. In our prayers today, in addition to those who are listed in the worship folder, we want to pray for the family of Al Scott. Uh, Al was a former brother-in-law of Carol's and mine. We certainly want to pray for his family and friends. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For thankful and steadfast hearts to receive God's word that he would enable us to keep it and bring forth its good fruit in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For faithful hearts, that we would remain steadfast in the word of God and never follow false gospels that lead us away from his truth. And for pastors who will preach with purity and joy, that we are saved by God's grace alone, through faith alone, because of Christ alone. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who lead our land, for President Biden, Governor Youngkin especially, that they would use power rightly for the preservation of order, the accomplishment of justice, the protection of life, and the defense of the weak. And for wise, godly, and faithful leaders who will follow the Lord's commands and serve with integrity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all who face adversity of any kind, 
This day we especially pray for Carol, Luzetta, John, Dean, Mickey, and Michelle. For all those with long-term needs, Lord, we pray that you would be with them and keep them in your care. That our God would comfort them by his Holy Spirit and that they would acknowledge their afflictions as the manifestation of his fatherly will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and Heavenly Father, we pray that you would be with our, our military and police. Be with A.J., Troy, Brandon, Mitchell, Jordan, Kyle, Garrett, Meredith, Victor, and Mike. Lord, keep them safe in your care. And be with all of our medical workers as well. Let us pray to the Lord. To the Lord. Lord. And Heavenly Father, be with our missionaries and international ministries. We especially pray for Pastor Matt Wood and family and Pastor Gustavo Micah and family. Help them to purely and correctly preach that gospel message that many would hear and many would come to faith. Comfort them in their times of loneliness and being far away. Remind them of the heavenly home that you have for them eternally. Let us pray to, to the Lord. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we pray that you would be with all those who are grieving the passing of loved ones, especially the family and friends of Al Scott. Lord, we pray that you would give them that peace which passes all understanding, knowing that through faith in Jesus Christ, we have the assurance of forgiveness and life in his name. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Preserve your church, O Lord, and each of us as members of Christ's body that we may not surrender the true gospel for any reason, but be kept in this faith and fear throughout the days of our earthly pilgrimage, until the day when we and all your people shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the reward you have prepared for us, and all who have loved his appearing. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you and saying. <laughs>
take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Now may this body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith from this life and on into a life everlasting. Depart in peace. Serve the Lord.
bless you and keep you in his care always. Take a knee. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given for you. Take a knee. The true body. Take a knee. The true body, given for you. The Lord bless you and keep you in His care always. Take a knee. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Now may this body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith from this life and on into the life of our last. Part in peace. Serve the Lord.
Please rise. you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as we move into our luncheon, we pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, you are giving us abundant gifts. We thank you especially for the gift of the salvation we have through faith in Christ alone. And we thank you for the bountiful gifts you give us here in this life. We thank you for the food that you have set before us, all the hands that have prepared it. And we pray that you would use it to strengthen us in our daily living, that all that we do and say might be to your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Sure. Oh.